Ah, good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Diesel Creek. My name's Matt. Behind me, that big red building right there, that is my dream shop. Now, for 12 months or better now, I've been steadily turning a patch of woods here into a building plot and then a building, and now my shop is finally here. And we are just so close at this point to uh, calling it a wrap and saying that it's an officially done, move-in ready shop, but there is still work to be done. In the last couple episodes, we've been focusing on the interior work and then the front of the building. Now it's time for the back of the building to get some love. As you can see, there are still just construction materials laying everywhere underneath the porch roof there. And also underneath the porch roof there has not had the tin installed yet. So, so I got my uh, little buddy Austin with me today. We're going to try and get the tin thrown up on the underside of the ceiling there. And we are also going to have Bob the electrician making another appearance and we are going to be mounting some lights over here on the far wall as well as a bunch of outside outlets and all kind of other stuff. So lots to be done, no sense gabbing about it. Let's get to it. All right, well, to illuminate the side of the building over there, I picked up some of these Hyperlight LED wall packs and that basically is going to illuminate the entire side of the building out there because that's going to be a driveway around the building so, you know, there's a cliff side on one side effectively, so it'd be nice to turn on some lights and be able to see if you got to drive around there with a trailer or something at night. Let's see what we got here. I've gotten a bunch of lights from Hyperlight now at this point, and I've been happy with all of them. Oh, yeah. Nice. That's all metal housing and everything. This is a nice commercial grade light. Sweet. That'll mount right on the side of the building like so. It's got a sensor opening up here for a photo cell if you wanted to put them on a on a dusk to dawn type setting. Those are gonna be nice. Alrighty, well first things first here before we can do any work overhead on the porch we need to get all the stuff out of the way off of the porch so that I can actually get the man lift out here and work. If I had a functioning boom lift, it would be pretty convenient right now because we wouldn't need to move anything, but I don't. We got this porch slab pretty well cleaned off now and while we were doing that old Bob the electrician showed up with his bucket truck here getting those wall packs mounted for us pretty excited to see these things turned on you'll have to stick around to the end of the video to see these kicked on I've never even been up into these rafters, so we're gonna get up here and see what we're working with as far as trim channels and whatnot to cover the ends of our sheeting. Uh-huh. So what it looks like is we got some F channel over here, which we'll be able to tuck in one end of the sheeting into. Um, but we got nothing on the short sides or this other long side so i gotta figure out how to do this since i'm not a professional siding person a tin knocker if you will i don't know what i'm doing so stand by all right before we can put the tin on the ceiling here we need to mount some j channel for the tin to guide into here Right now we're going to be taking this red J channel which matches the outside color here, putting it along the bottom here and nailing it up to the bottom of the truss. Yeah Austin, let's go fix that mess up. We got this J channel all done here. We just have one thing to fix. Somebody shot a nail through the tin work. Hey. 
wasn't him, he says. Must be that other guy I got working for me. Uh, it's hard to find good help. All right, we got our sheets all cut to length now. We got the J channel mounted up there on the uh, the header there and on the uh, rafter, and on the walls when we before we put the sheets up, we had actually pre-drilled all the screw holes so that they were all in a nice, perfectly straight line across the wall. I would like to do that on the ceiling. However, when they built this building, they did not get the truss spacing uh, close enough for us to be able to hit that target. Um, you know, you're only hitting an inch and a half wide board across 40 feet. So the trusses have some wave to it, but that's not our only issue here. They also, what I imagine happened is they put them on the wrong side of the line. So when you lay out for trusses, you'll pull your tape measure out and whatever centers you're running the trusses on, you'll put a line and then you'll put an X on the side of the line that uh, the truss is supposed to land on. And I think that somebody either put the X on the wrong side or put the board on the wrong side of the line, regardless of the X or whatever. But, uh, so we got trusses that are out a little bit and that doesn't really affect the building integrity at all, but it definitely uh, makes it a lot harder to try and screw something to. So unfortunately, this is gonna be a slow process. We're gonna have to pull a string line on each sheet and screw them. That's about the easiest way I can figure to get a nice straight line of screws. All right, well, as you can see, we got two sheets up there, and it it's a disaster. It's such a pain. None, nothing's uh, lined up the way it should be, like I said, so we're like pulling string lines across the sheets each time because you can't pre-drill, and uh, that's about the only way I can figure to keep a straight line uh, and still hit the truss, so it's what, it's what we got to do, so... I don't want to talk about it. There's too much cussing involved to record it normally, but uh, enjoy a nice time lapse of us struggling here. Well, would you look at that? 
I know it doesn't look like a, a big job, but let me tell you, that, that sucked. Trying to get those panels up over your head and finagle them into the J channels on both ends and then hold them there while you start some screws. It was, it was rough. And uh, my helper here is about a foot and a half shorter than I am, so neither one of us were at a comfortable working height the entire time. <laughs> but we got her done, and uh, I think it looks pretty good. The only issue now is there's a bit of an echo. I don't know if you guys can hear it, but... Uh, echo! Yeah, it's given like a weird reverb, so... Not much we can do about that, unfortunately. Maybe just after time and we get some things uh, put underneath here, we'll, uh, we'll be able to absorb some of that sound. I'm worried about the same thing in the building, but since I'm not putting the metal on the ceiling, I don't think we'll have the same issues. Because right now, it sounds pretty good in here. Not, not really any echo at all. And uh, once the spray foam is on the ceiling, that should also uh, stop that even more. Uh, and now we got more pieces of the puzzle coming together here. I just got a call from the garage door people. In the last video, I talked about the uh, garage door track needed to be raised up to facilitate the better overhead clearance of my crane. And I just got a call from them. They are on their way out here with all the pieces, parts I need to get that lifted up higher and uh, sucked up to the ceiling. So I don't know that I'm going to record much of that because you guys kind of already saw some garage door action once. But uh, here you go. Today, the last big crucial piece to the puzzle is finally showing up for the shop. That's right, we've got spray foam insulation coming to do this whole roof deck. And man, I couldn't be more excited about it. So I don't know if you guys can tell right now, the audio is probably really bad because it is pouring down rain outside. It's been thunderstorming all morning here. And that rain on a metal roof with no insulation is pretty darn loud like you can't really even talk in here without shouting so i can't wait to see the transformation between right now and when they're done spraying this foam because it should take i think 90 percent of that rain noise completely away so i'm really excited about that not to mention all the heat we'll be saving in here there should be no more drafts coming through this building That'll have us completely insulated and uh, ready to heat this thing come next winter. We're pretty much out of this winter. We're getting into the 50s and 60s every day now, so uh, don't really need it anymore for this year. But it'll still be great in the hot summertime, too. That And insulation is going to keep that hot sun from beating through the roof and uh, heating it up in here. So double whammy on the insulation. I'm really excited about that. In preparation for them to come and uh, spray this foam, I've been spending the last several hours completely cleaning out the building here. I still got a little bit of stuff to go, but as you can see, we're coming down the home stretch there. There's not too much left in here. So I got to finish cleaning that up. I'll bring you guys back when the spray foam people get here. Spray foam is on the way. Oh man, I'm excited. This looks like a snazzy unit they got too, pretty new. Got everything out of the building. We're gonna get everything plasticed off here. That way we don't get overspray on nothing. I didn't do a good job narrating, so I just wanna pop in real quick yeah. and explain what they're doing here. The soffit underneath the overhang outside the building is a vented soffit, which uh, allows air to uh, circulate in if, if you have an attic. So I don't have one. So they're using these uh, fiberglass bats to block off the opening into the uh, overhang so that they don't get any spray foam into that vented soffit and potentially have spray foam uh, oozing out of that uh, the soffit so that's what they're doing here with the fiberglass My ride awaits. <laughs> this is the most pathetic race I've ever seen. <laughs> well, it looks like the leader there has spun out on that slight grade, so this is my chance to overtake. If I can make that hill, I'm gonna make them look really bad.
guys are not playing around. They're getting ahead of me. They just fired up their spray rig here. They got a beautiful new spray rig here they brought out. Got a couple of these big Graco reactors here. I think they can get three guys spraying at once. That's why they got three man lifts. Inside the power unit here, we got a Cummins in here powering this whole thing. They got all the plastic hung up here. All my garage door stuff, they're getting covered up good. They got their man lifts all covered up. There's a lot of overspray with this stuff, so got to plastic everything off so that it's not covered in a layer of foam. Not much left to do, and they'll be spraying. That looks like these guys are just about ready to get started here. They sprayed a little test sample up there, I'm imagining. Make sure everything's mixing right and the phone's running correctly. It's a pretty big hunk of foam. It's pretty warm too. Might get out the thermal camera and play around and show you how hot this stuff's getting. Pretty wild. expands quick. You building a couch to take lunch on or what? <laughs> I get through my line. Check that out. That's pretty sweet. Check that. She's warm. Check that out. We're getting into some action now. Look at that depth control. They know just how much to spray and it expands right out to the flush with the purlin. That's an inch and a half and then they'll come back and do another inch and a half pass. So we're gonna wind up with three inches total. And that should keep us really nice and warm in the winter time and hopefully a little bit cooler in the summertime.
pretty fancy. I don't know what any of this stuff means, but it's pretty cool. This trailer is laid out. Man, these guys are killing it. I went and grabbed some lunch, I come back, they got over two thirds of the insulation done. And on this side, they've already started painting. Got one coat of that nice light gray on there. This is looking awesome. All right, these uh, spray foam solution guys are almost done with the spray foam inside. So I pulled out the old Top Dawn TC400 thermal imaging camera here. We're gonna go have a look and check out what that looks like coming out of the gun. Pretty wild, you can really see that heat on there. These guys are back again. This is Spray Foam Solutions out of Ohio. And man, they are done an absolutely awesome job for me. All they gotta do today is uh, throw a second coat of paint on the insulation and they're gonna be wrapped up. This is a different trailer than they had yesterday. Still a very nice setup here.
All right, and with that, the shop is so close to completion. All I have left to do now is fill in that tin right there around the doors at both ends, and we are 100% complete minus a few electrical odds and ends, but we can move in, and that's the big thing I've been waiting on. So these guys did an absolutely killer job. The foam is very nice and even um, for foam. I mean, you can't, you can't expect it to look like sheet goods, you know, but they did a really great job keeping a nice uniform coat everywhere. They really filled in all the, uh, the places you might have little gaps and stuff. So I'm super, super happy with everything they did. The paint coverage is nice and even. And, uh, you know, there was even a little bit of lack of light in here when they were painting the second coat. And as soon as they opened the doors, they saw some little places that they had missed and they came right down through here and touched it all up with a brush. No problem. I didn't even have to ask them to do it. So that says a lot. Look at that. Now, the only thing that I have been slightly disappointed with so far is the acoustics in here, and that's no fault of the spray foam guys. Uh, just having all this foam in here has actually kind of changed the acoustics of the room. The paneling on the back of the paneling before, there was like a felt, and I think that helped dampen a lot of the noise. Well, now this foam, since it's a closed cell foam, doesn't really uh, do that much dampening. So we got a little bit of an echo going on, if you can't tell. I'm sure you can, but uh, that's okay. We can remedy that with uh, some acoustical panels or just hanging up some flags and stuff in the shop. So. so not really a big deal. We should be able to remedy all that pretty easy. And all right. Well, I don't know if you guys can hear it right now, but it is once again pouring down rain outside. This is a couple days later after the spray foam guys have done their thing. And you can tell it's raining, but uh, it's definitely an improvement over no insulation. The one thing we have acquired though is an echo, as you can hear. Echo! Yeah, so, but all the acoustics aside, the big thing that I wanted the spray foam for was the temperature control. And man, the difference the last few days uh, in the temperature. Overnight, it gets down into the 20s and 30s, and then in the daytime, it's up in the 50s. Well, if I open up the doors during the day and then close them as it starts getting cooler in the evening time, it has been still 40, 45 degrees in here in the morning uh, with no heat running in this building whatsoever. So that's been awesome, and uh, that's definitely gonna be a giant help come uh, extreme heat and extreme cold time of year. So definitely looking forward to that. I can't wait this time next year. This floor is gonna be all heated up real nice. This insulation is gonna be really having a nice lid on the whole building here and keeping all the heat in for us. So a big thanks to the guys at Spray Foam Solutions for their great work here. The link to those guys, if you're interested, is down in the description. They, they did a fantastic job for me. I'm sure they can do a fantastic job for you guys as well. Now last but certainly not least, before we wrap things up here, the wall packs that we had uh, Buddy Bob the electrician install out on the side of the building there. Let's go check those out in the dark. What do you guys think about that? Those suckers are bright, ain't they? Those two wall packs do a heck of a lot to illuminate the whole side of this building. I mean, I, I could be working underneath the hood of that truck with no trouble at all. Nice and bright out here. So, those things are awesome. Glad, glad we got those. If you guys are interested in those wall packs at all, or any of the lights I've used in this project, the link to those is all down in the description as well. Things are finally starting to come to a close here. I'm really excited about it. The shop, I keep saying it, but the shop is so stinking close. I think we got one more video and then uh, that's going to be the end of the shop build series for now until we come back and put the overhead crane in. Everybody keeps asking me about the overhead crane. I'm not going to put that in until the summertime because there's going to be it's just a lot of work. That's basically a whole separate project in itself and uh, yeah so look forward to those videos in the summertime. I am excited to get that thing installed in here. I just have a few more details to iron out with that thing before I even try to erect it, so that's a, a whole nother thing. So with the completion of the shop here as well, we're definitely going to be getting back to some more mechanical, heavy equipment related videos. So if you guys have been missing those, hang in there. We're, we're real close now. 
But if you've enjoyed the shop series, let me know by dropping a comment down below and hitting that thumbs up button as always. But anyways, guys, that's all I got for now. So as always, thank you for watching, and I will see you on the next one. Later.